This is John Kinnight with SamBlacksOrlando.com. I'm here with Michael McGrath, a local artist, prolific, been creating pictures for about two years, has done several shows, more than ten. Michael, thank you for joining us. Your, your AKA is really Mikey Bear. Yes. Why Mikey Bear? I feel like it's got like a, well, first of all, John, thank you for having me. Thank you for interviewing me. I love Sam Flax, by the way. We A lot of the pieces I, I did, I use a lot of Sam Flax materials that, and paints and, and things like that. And I and the staff is very knowledgeable and I don't know where I would be with some of, like without some of their knowledge and like, it's really helpful. So well, ask the people there. We acknowledge that we are the best. It's amazing. Course. It really is. Without saying. It's so awesome. But so, the Mikey Bear moniker that I, I use, it kind of like evolved just from people know me for a while and they just start calling me Mikey and then I felt like the Mikey Bear kind of embodied with like the the ideas that I use for my paintings because it has like a like a cute aesthetic but sometimes the composition or the idea or the concept will be a little darker but it, it'll be like disguised in this kind of like cute palatable like kind of like aesthetic so that's where the Mikey Bear comes from so Mikey Bear I've been to a lot of shows. This is totally different technique. Yes. Can you take us a little bit about step by step? Sure. About the cutout. Not so much. We'll talk about inspiration for your pieces a little bit later, but about how you're actually creating this. Okay. Well, usually what I do, I'm I'm definitely much more comfortable in drawing, drawing up concepts and ideas, and I've been doing it for more than longer than I've been painting. I've only been painting pretty steadily for about two years, so my, my process is I usually drop a, a concept or an idea, and then I will, I've been trying to keep it kind of basic so I can fill in most of the details with paint, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll draw it up, and then I'll draw it onto the wood, and then I'll cut it out, but I'll draw a final like under drawing so I can build the paint off of that, and that fills it into the, to the wood better. Then rather than trying to cut perfectly around the drawing, it's a little easier to give yourself some artistic license and kind of fill in the, the drawing, the, like the last stage drawing before you paint onto the onto the actual cutout wood. So that's what I've been doing. And um, then I, I, I kind of rough it in and then I, um, with underpaintings uh, as far as like the color, and then I'll build in light and shadow after that. And then the clear coat that you see is a two part epoxy coating that usually is used for like bar tops and stuff like that. So then I, I put that on top, the, the very last thing I do, and then I, I cross my fingers and hope nothing falls into it or bubbles don't get crazy, but I, I take a blowtorch about 20 minutes after I lay down the, the epoxy and then I, I try to get all the bubbles out of it and then I just babysit it for about four hours, make sure that there's not gonna be anything that's gonna be stuck into it. So that's the process with what, do I, do, with what I do with these. But the, I, I feel like the cutouts, it, it kind of empowers you in a way that it, it interacts differently with the viewer and the space because you, you don't really have to think as much about background and but it's a good thing and a bad thing sometimes because it's usually the focus is all about that particular piece and that 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 concept that you've done so there's no there's no real interaction with the background so it can be a good thing and a bad thing but I I usually love just doing the cutout so I can't even I've only think I've only done one piece that was on canvas like a square canvas so it's usually always this kind of cutout situation that I do and this piece that I did here, it's, uh, it's uh, Trace Cabras del Diablo. And the actual concept for the show that we had for the, for the three bears, which is Jeff, Cake, and myself, it was a, a after ever after. So it's kind of loosely based on fairy tales that we all grew up with. And this would be Billy Goat's Gruff. And um, I tried to make it kind of like a, like a scarier kind of like composition done in like a kind of like stereotypically cute colors, the pink and the blue. And then I grounded it out with Actually, this is airbrush paint that I had used the black, and I tried to do it in a really illustrative style, and I tried to really keep it kind of uh, close to the drawing that I did of the goats. So I spoke with Jeffrey earlier okay. about uh, the trio and, and the three bears, and that you guys are more than artists, you're curators, aren't you? Yes, we do Tell curate art shows. And the three bears and what it means and what it is. Okay. It actually, um, we've been curating, I'd say for about three and a half years, we've been curating uh, shows, and um, it actually, 
it evolved from a show that Heidi Newsel, she goes by the name Naysayer. We did a show with her at SIP, and uh, which is an Orlando uh, bar, and we did a show there. And it was called Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And I had done a piece for that show that was a three-headed Winnie the Pooh that was dipping his hand into a jar that had like this ectoplasmic kind of like green fluid and he was very crazed looking and it had like a an RX kind of a prescription symbol on it and it was called and the three bear and um, so that kind of evolved from that because we like that concept and we're kind of bearish dudes and we are in this con like, um, this relationship and we have the curating thing that we do and uh, which enables us to showcase a lot of artists that we love and a lot of mostly local artists we've um, We've been able to do that quite often and that's, it's really helpful for us because not only are we able to showcase our friends, but we're able to like really get involved with a, a business partnership with them and help get them some money for their awesome artwork that they do, so. Well, from the spectator's point of view, you're really creating an interesting scene and with the amount of shows that you do, we just can't thank you enough for what you're doing for the Orlando oh, scene. Man. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us, and I can't wait to look at more of your work. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, John.